Let's find out where the big guys are positioned. Finally, we have new commitment of traders data. So what this data is, for those who don't know, is that if you ever place a trade with a futures broker anywhere in the US, they report that to the government. The government nets out whether people are long or short and all of those put together. So we can take a look at who's long and where and who's short and where. And it becomes a great tool to kind of figure out if the boat is a little bit too loaded on one side or the other. Long time viewers of the channel know that I've been kind of pounding the table on this for some time at all during this time right here because everybody was short and getting more short even though the futures were hitting new highs. So that gave me a lot of encouragement to continue and, and to keep going and, and owning stocks and buying things and made for a great 2025 because where the narrative was always scary all the time, the futures weren't. And then the commitment of traders data was not because if they're short and we're moving higher, they're gonna have to cover. And this is from the large speculators that are generally speaking, always wrong. So why haven't I talked about it in a while? Well, the government shutdown made it so that the, f the brokers would report this into the government and the government just sat on the data because whoever's job it was to do the data was not working. So you'd think when the government opened up a while ago that they would just backdate all the data and, and hock it out to us and give it to us. Like government's work, it took weeks and weeks and weeks. We're finally now caught up. So every week we're gonna get new commitment traders data. So if I see something interesting on it, I will definitely report that and give that to you guys. And the first thing that I see that is interesting on it, I'll move myself to this side, is right here that you can see in the last little bit, those shorts that have been kind of pounding the table, short the market all year, they covered quite a bit and now they're about even. And it's funny that that's happening at the same time that this price is moving sideways. So when everybody was betting that the market was going to go down, all of a sudden the market goes up again. These guys are the guys that are quite often wrong, especially at extremes. So that makes sense. And now they cover and we just move sideways. So now there's not really much information to be gleaned. And I talk about this all the time where we are, when we're looking at commitment of traders data, we are looking at it like sentiment data. And sentiment data is one of those things that I don't care if people are you know, a little bit happy or a little bit sad or whatever. The sentiment data only matters at the extremes. If everybody thinks the market is like crazy and the world is coming to an end, that's when I want to buy. If everybody is like, wow, the market's just going to go up forever, then maybe it's time to take some profits. But in the middle, it doesn't matter. There's no signal there. It's only There's only signals at the extreme. Think of like, you know, an RSI or something like that. If the RSI is super, super oversold and you're short, maybe it's time to take some profits. And if you're long, maybe it's time to take some profits. If you're just in the middle, there's there's really nothing to be gleaned from there. So we're at that area of the market where I think that this kind of goes to my synopsis from the seasonality data that we could be in for a choppy period of time. And so far we've been getting that, right? The market really hasn't moved in a couple months here and there is no fuel for the fire. Again, think about this like a short squeeze. People were shorting into the market as it was ripping, those people get squeezed. So this one's interesting. This is the dollar. It's actually the euro. You can use that as a good proxy for what the, the US dollar is doing. And people are more short the dollar or long the euro than they've been since all the way back here in 2023. So huge uh, move here potential for remember what happened in 2024 and 2025 where the euro went up and that just meant the dollar fell. And now, right, they're not, they were short right here and the dollar ripped or the, or the euro ripped so the dollar fell while they were short and now they're very very long and again you can see this right so they're long thing goes down they get very short thing goes up right it's not a trading signal of itself but it's saying hey the conditions are here that if we get some sort of some negative catalyst for the euro or positive catalyst for the dollar the dollar could spike that could uh, cause all of these people who are short the dollar long the euro to cover and that, generally speaking, isn't the best thing for stocks. I mean, if the dollar is ripping, you generally have a little bit of pressure on stocks because it means people are generally selling assets to buy the dollar. So that's, again, more potential confirmation that we are entering a choppy period of time in the market. I'm not 
you know, saying an all out bear market or anything, anything can obviously happen, but just more kind of cracks getting shown here. Gold is interesting to me because gold is one of those things in which it's not the commitment trader isn't moving that like the people aren't getting more long and they're not selling their gold and they're not buying more gold. Just really nothing is happening as gold kind of drifts higher, which leads me to kind of the crux of all of this. And what we're going to talk about is silver, right? So silver is in all the news. It's what I'm going to title this video to get the most clicks. Everybody's talking about silver all the time. I would have expected before I went and looked at this data that as this pushed higher, that there'd be more people that own silver. They're buying silver on the way up. The exact opposite is happening. People are actually selling and shorting silver into this move. That to me makes me think that we could have more to go in this rally in silver. You know, maybe some pullbacks, right? Maybe we come back and test 80 and then go from there. Uh, anything can happen, obviously, right? Price trumps everything when it comes to this data. But the fact that not everybody is involved in silver, we're not getting this huge rally in silver in which everybody's buying into it. That to me is interesting. Generally, I would expect if you just took the commitment traders data out and you just looked at the stock data, you'd say, oh yeah, everybody owns silver. It's really crowded trade right now. Well, the data is telling us something else. It might not be crowded at all. So we have to pay very, very close attention here to silver because it, this has kind of flipped me from instead of potentially looking for tops, I'm now looking for dips to buy, bases to break out of, that type of thing. I think there might be more lag going on here in silver. And then this other one is an interesting look as well, where natural gas. So the yellow line on top is the anchored view app from that 2022-2023 high. That was the, you know, war in Ukraine kind of thing. And you can see how well it's respected that. It was resistance here, and it was resistance here, and then back here. Then it was support in through here and support here and now support back here. So this line has been very well respected. And also people have really, really, they get, they got the most short back here before we had a big bounce. They got really short again right here before this big bounce. And now they're equally as short or a little bit more short right now. So we're pulling back to that anchored view app. We fell pretty dramatically and everybody in the world is short natural gas. Now, natural gas, I say this every time I talk about it, it's a crazy instrument. If you're going to trade something like you could do a, a UNG, if you don't want to trade the futures, just know you're essentially trading like an internet, an internet company, like a, a fresh internet company. But yeah, so with UNG moving lower, hitting new lows here, and natural gas getting right close to this area of support with everyone in the world shorted, that makes me think, hey, potentially it's time to buy these things. Potentially it's time to buy, take a little bit of a long trade here. So like anything, I would, I'd zoom in. I'm not just going to, this is that, you know, UNGs at lows is probably how I'd express it. I'm not just going to take a shot here, but what I might do is see, you know, we have a little hammer candle yesterday, uh, look at a weekly chart or something like that. And if I start to see some buying, maybe we reclaim like 1150, 12, that might be an interesting one. So I love this data because it shows us where the entire world is. If the world is neutral, there's no data to be given. If everyone's long, me as a contrarian dude, I might want to look for a short. If everyone's short, I might want to look for a long. Uh, but as always, price is king. If everybody is short and the thing's going down, they're right. They have no reason to, to panic and cover. If everything is going up and everyone's long, then great, good for them. So I want to look for the fact, I want to look for the opposite. I want everyone to be short and have some sort of spike in natural gas to take a shot on. Or I want everyone to be long and some sort of big drop to happen so I can take a short on it. And I can play this other side knowing that potentially people are trapped in this trade. So you found any help from this? Again, do the, the likes and the shares and the comments. I love all that stuff. And so do the algorithms that you're watching this on. Stats Edge Pro members, you're going to get access to every output of every algorithm that I've built on the weekends. So if you are not a Stats Edge Pro member, go to statsedgetrading.com, give us a shot, trade with statistics, trade with edge, you know, shut out the narrative and the news and all this stuff that doesn't help us trade with a nice provable edge. And until I talk to you guys next time, get away from the screens.